is about uh, an inverse spectral problem uh, for the third order operator. Uh, but uh, before uh, uh, talking about uh, the third order operators, uh, I'd like to recall uh, some uh, well-known results uh, for the Sturm-Liouville operator. Uh, the most complete results in the inverse spectral theory have been uh, obtained uh, for the uh, Sturm-Liouville equation one. Mm. This is uh, the second order uh, linear differential equation. Uh, the function Q is usually called um, the potential and uh, lambda is a spectral par parameter. So uh, usually this equation is considered um, on a finite interval with some boundary conditions, uh, or it also can be considered on uh, the line or on the half line. Uh, here are um, the, uh, uh, the first two are uh, references are the um, uh, classical monographs by Marchenka and uh, Levitan. And uh, uh, there are also uh, more recent books by Fraden and Yurko and by Kravchenka. Uh, uh, the basic results uh, on inverse Stumbeville uh, problems can be found in these books uh, and uh, in the references therein. Uh, and we will consider uh, um, uh, the inverse Tum Liouville problem uh, in the following statement. Um, consider uh, the Tum Liouville equation one uh, with the Dirichlet boundary conditions two, uh, denote by uh, lambda n the eigenvalues um, of the problem uh, one two, uh, by uh, uh, y n um, the corresponding eigenfunctions. Uh, if the potential Q is uh, real valued, um, then uh, the eigenfunctions, uh, then the eigenvalues will be simple. So each eigenvalue has uh, exactly one eigenfunction, uh, and let they be normed by uh, this condition. Uh, then uh, the uh, norms in uh, L2 um, are called uh, the weight numbers, and uh, the classical inverse problem statement is given the spectral data, uh, that is uh, the eigenvalues and uh, the weight numbers, uh, one has to find um, the potential Q. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, theorem uh, uh, provides um, uh, the necessary and sufficient conditions uh, for solvability of this inverse problem. In other words, it gives um, the spectral data characterization uh, for the Sturm-Liouville problem. Uh, for uh, numbers uh, lambda n and alpha n uh, to be the spectral data of the uh, problem 1, 2 of the Sturm-Liouville problem with the directly boundary conditions uh, with a real valued potential of class L2, uh, the following conditions are necessary and sufficient. Mm, the first condition is uh, uh, lambda n's uh, uh, have to be uh, real mm, and distinct and uh, alpha ends uh, have to be positive. And uh, the second condition uh, is uh, the asymptotics uh, on the eigenvalues and on the weight numbers. Uh, here, um, omega is uh, this constant uh, and the remainder terms uh, are sequences of L2. Uh, uh, this is a remarkable you see, if we uh, take uh, any arbitrary uh, values, uh, lambda n and alpha n, satisfying these conditions, uh, uh, this uh, theorem says that there exists uh, uh, a potential Q of class L2, which corresponds uh, to this data. So this theorem gives uh, the one-to-one -one correspondence between the potentials of this class and uh, the uh, uh, spectral data. Uh, and the conditions are uh, very simple. There are only uh, simple uh, structure, uh, structural conditions and asymptotics. Uh, uh, for the first time, uh, the necessary and sufficient conditions uh, of the uh, Sturm-Liouville uh, inverse problem solvability uh, were obtained uh, in the paper uh, by Gilfand and Levitan. Uh, but Mm, uh, the conditions of Gelfand and uh, Levitan, uh, they were not of this form, uh, but there was a gap uh, between uh, necessary conditions and sufficient. Mm. Uh, 
because uh, the uh, uh, requirements on the uh, spectral data asymptotics uh, by sufficiency uh, were stronger uh, then uh, it is possible to obtain by uh, their necessity so there was a gap uh, later on uh, this gap uh, was removed and uh, in a, a more recent literature um, in particular in the book by Freiden and Yulko um, the conditions uh, are provided in this form uh, as necessary and sufficient uh, when necessary and sufficient conditions coincide uh, but uh, actually there are not many operators uh, for which it's possible uh, for, for which we know such uh, simple uh, necessary and sufficient conditions uh, for other classes uh, for example, for the matrix to nivel operators, for higher order differential operators, for differential systems, uh, uh, the necessary, the known uh, necessary and sufficient conditions are uh, more uh, complicated. Mm. And uh, uh, so uh, it's, in, it's uh, interesting to find uh, su uh, such classes of simple conditions for uh, more general classes of operators. Uh, uh, uh next let us proceed to the higher order differential operators uh, for higher order differential operators when n is greater than two uh, the uh, situation is uh, different from the second order uh, because the famous uh, method of uh, gilfand and uh, levitan uh, uh, doesn't work for such operators and uh, that's why uh, uh, for uh, the development uh, of the inverse problem theory for them, uh, a new meta method uh, was needed, and uh, such method was invented by uh, Professor uh, Yurko and is called by the method of spectral mappings. Uh, by using this method, uh, Professor Yurko uh, constructed the inverse uh, problem theory for the higher order uh, differential operators. Uh, on the finite interval and on the half line. Uh, here is the reference uh, to the monograph uh, about the method of spectral mappings. Uh, 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 but uh, in this uh, monograph uh, and uh, in the previous uh, literature, uh, the operators with integrable coefficients uh, were considered. Uh, in recent years, uh, uh, a spectral theory of uh, differential operators with distribution coefficients uh, intensive, uh, is intensively developed. developing. Uh, in particular, uh, in this paper uh, by uh, Merzoyev and Shkalikov, uh, uh, a regularization approach uh, was subjected uh, for uh, uh, even order differential uh, operators uh, generated by such uh, differential expressions. Uh, here, um, uh, tau k and sigma k uh, are the coefficients. If uh, these functions tau k and uh, sigma k are sufficiently smooth, uh, then we can differentiate uh, these brackets and then we obtain this form. Uh, but here we consider uh, the case when uh, uh, the coefficients uh, tau k and uh, sigma k are of class L2. Uh, so uh, the derivatives which participate in the operator, uh, they are uh, generalized functions. Uh, uh, so we have uh, distribution coefficients. Uh, so I have already said that Merzolov and Shkalikov uh, developed um, a regularization approach uh, which uh, allows us uh, to understand uh, these operators and uh, to work with uh, them with various spectral uh, issues uh, for uh, such differential expressions. Uh, and uh, in the next paper, in this uh, preprint, um, uh, the similar uh, regularization uh, was obtained for um, odd order uh, operators. Uh, and based on these results, I started to develop the inverse problem theory. Uh, 
uh, for higher order differential operators with uh, distribution uh, coefficients. Uh, here are uh, some of my papers, and uh, now I'll uh, tell you some of the results, especially um, about um, the third order uh, differential equation. Uh, why uh, I'd like to consider the third order differential equation? Uh, uh, actually, uh, many of uh, these results are valid also for arbitrary order, uh, but uh, the first reason is that um, the third order order will be easier to understand. Uh, uh, and uh, the second reason is that for the third order, um, uh, uh, the most complete uh, results um, were obtained, uh, and, uh, uh, which in my opinion are in the most beautiful form comparing with uh, higher orders. Uh, so uh, let us consider um, the uh, 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 third order differential equation seven. Uh, here, um, uh, uh, tau uh, one and uh, tau zero are its uh, coefficients. Tau one is, uh, belongs to L2 and tau zero belongs to W2 minus one. Uh, this is uh, a distribution coefficient. Uh, uh, w2 minus 1 is the space of functions uh, which are um, uh, de derivatives of the functions of uh, L2. Uh, so uh, it means that uh, tau 0 is the uh, derivative of sigma 0, where sigma 0 is L2 function. Uh, for this equation, uh, we construct uh, the associated matrix. Um, of this form. Uh, here, uh, sigma zero is uh, this antiderivative of uh, tau zero. Uh, and uh, uh, let us introduce uh, the quasi derivatives uh, by uh, these formulas. Uh, uh, the quasi derivative of order zero uh, is just uh, the function y. And uh, 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 the quasi derivatives of higher orders are defined uh, by this uh, recurrent uh, relation. Uh, here, f, k, g are the uh, elements of this matrix. Uh, so, uh, the first uh, quasi derivative is constructed uh, by using the first uh, row. Um, since here uh, we have uh, zero, uh, so we have that the first uh, quasi derivative uh, is, uh, co coincides with the standard derivative. Uh, for, so for G, uh, zero and one, we have uh, the, uh, that uh, the quasi derivatives uh, are equal to the corresponding uh, standard derivatives. Uh, then uh, the second uh, quasi derivative is defined by the uh, second row. So here we have this coefficient. And uh, the third uh, quasi derivative is defined by the third row uh, in this way. Uh, in addition, we define uh, the domain df, which is uh, the set of functions y, whose uh, quasi derivatives uh, are absolutely continuous for k uh, 0, 1, and 2. So if we take uh, y from this um, uh, uh, domain, uh, then uh, the uh, corresponding quasi derivatives will be uh, defined. Uh, will be correctly defined uh, in the regular sense. So they will be uh, uh, regular functions um, uh, because uh, these quasi derivatives are absolutely continuous. And if we consider the third uh, quasi derivative, then uh, here we have the derivative uh, of the second uh, quasi derivative. The second quasi derivative is absolutely continuous. So this derivative is uh, integrable. And uh, uh, this term is also integrable, and uh, this is also. So we have that uh, this uh, derivative is uh, exists in the classical sense. Uh, uh, so uh, and here is the uh, differential expression, uh, which uh, occurs in the uh, considered third order equation. And it can be easily shown that if y is of this Sobolev space, if it has uh, two uh, integrable derivatives, uh, then um, this differential expression is defined as uh, a generalized function, um, 
uh, where d prime is the space of linear continuous functions uh, on the set of test functions, uh, space of test functions uh, d, which is this space. Uh, so if uh, if we take such y, then this expression is defined uh, in the sense of generalized functions. Uh, but uh, actually, we can work with this equation uh, without using the theory of generalized function, uh, which is sh shown by this proposition. Uh, this proposition follows from the results of uh, Merzoyev and Shkalikov, uh, namely from the paper about the odd order case. Uh, for any function y um, of this domain, df, uh, this relation holds. Uh, the uh, uh, differential uh, expression uh, coincides with the third uh, quasi-derivative, um, as it was defined uh, on the previous slide. Um, since uh, this third derivative, uh, quasi-derivative is regular, uh, then we have uh, that uh, ly is also a regular function and uh, this relation gives uh, the regularization uh, of uh, this differential expression. Mm. So uh, this proposition gives us uh, the regularization. Uh, uh, we will call a function y a solution of uh, uh, equation seven of the third order equation. Mm. If y is of this domain, uh, and uh, if the equation holds uh, uh, absolutely everywhere. Uh, if y belongs to this domain, then we have, uh, by proposition, we have uh, that ly is a, a regular function. It will be integrable on 0, 1. Uh, so we can consider this equation absolutely everywhere. Uh, it means that uh, if I say that some function is a solution, then I mean it belongs to this uh, domain. Uh, also, equation seven uh, can be represented as the first order system 10. Uh, here, y is the column vector of uh, quasi derivatives. Uh, F is the associated matrix, is this matrix, uh, which, is, which uh, consists of uh, regular functions. Uh, there are no uh, generalized functions in it. And uh, lambda is such matrix where lambda small is uh, the spectral parameter. So this is the occurrence of the spectral parameter. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, the first two rows of the system are just the definitions of the quasi-derivatives. And uh, the third row is this equation. Uh, it's uh, this third quasi-derivative equals lambda y. Uh, uh, so equation seven can be considered as this system. And this system, uh, it doesn't contain uh, singular generalized functions. Uh, it contain, contains only regular functions. Uh, now, uh, to work with uh, equation seven, we need to introduce uh, some of its uh, solutions, uh, denoted by CK uh, uh, for K1, 2, and 3, uh, the solutions of equation uh, seven. Which satisfy uh, the initial conditions 11, where delta kg is the Kronecker delta. Uh, and uh, uh, denote by uh, phi k uh, the solutions of the same equation, uh, which satisfy the boundary conditions uh, 12. Uh, the solution with index k uh, satisfies k uh, conditions at 0 and uh, three minus k conditions at one. Uh, uh, so CK are the solutions of initial value problems. Uh, similarly to um, the classical ordinary differential equations, uh, uh, the solutions uh, exist, uh, exist. Uh, they are unique. And uh, uh, since um, equation analytically depends on lambda, uh, the solutions and the quasi derivatives uh, will be entire analytic functions um, of lambda. So they will be analytic uh, in, in the whole uh, lambda plane. Uh, phi k are the solutions of the boundary value problems. Uh, so they are not uh, necessarily um, entire. Uh, they are called the while solutions. And they, together with the quasi derivatives, are meromorphic functions in lambda. Uh, 
Uh, ah, ne next, um, uh, note that um, uh, this uh, solutions CK uh, form a fundamental system of solutions. Uh, so phi K can be expanded um, over this uh, fundamental system. Uh, and uh, in the matrix form, we can represent this expansion uh, in this form. Mm, the fundamental uh, matrix of uh, the while solutions equals uh, the fundamental matrix of uh, the entire solutions multiplied by uh, some uh, matrix. M is uh, three by three, uh, uh, three times three matrix. Uh, it depends on lambda and it's called mm, the while Yurko matrix mm, because uh, for the first time, Mm, this matrix was introduced uh, by Professor Yurko mm, for uh, higher order differential operators with regular uh, coefficients. And uh, it was used as the main spectral uh, characteristics uh, in the theory constructed by uh, Yurko. Uh, uh, it can be easily shown that uh, this matrix is lower triangular and uh, is the unit uh, is a unit uh, lower triangular matrix. Uh, here are ones on the main diagonal and under uh, under uh, the uh, main diagonal, there are some non-trivial uh, elements uh, which can be represented as uh, fractions of some uh, functions uh, delta GK. Uh, and uh, delta GK for the third order, they can be uh, uh, written on the slide. Mm. You see, they are some uh, determinants which are composed um, of uh, the entire solutions CK and the derivatives. Uh, so uh, these functions, delta GK, they all are um, entire functions. Uh, that's why uh, MGK are meromorphic functions uh, and they poles uh, coincide with the zeros of delta KK. Uh, so uh, for the first column, um, the poles uh, coincide with the zeros of delta one one, and uh, for the second column, uh, there is only one element. Uh, its poles coincide with the entries, uh, with the zeros of uh, delta two two. Uh, these functions are uh, the characteristic functions of some boundary value problems. In particular, uh, for uh, uh, the most important are uh, these functions uh, delta kk, which are in the denominators, uh, and for them, um, these boundary value problems have uh, these boundary conditions. Uh, so for k uh, one and two, the zeros of uh, delta kk uh, coincide with the eigenvalues um, of the corresponding uh, boundary value problems lk uh, for uh, the third order uh, differential equations with. Uh, for L1 are these boundary conditions and for L2 are these boundary conditions. For uh, other uh, characteristic functions, uh, also uh, there are also um, uh, some uh, boundary value problems with some boundary conditions um, can be written um, similarly. So uh, in fact, if we have um, the spectra of these two problems and of the other problems, there are totally one, two, three, four, five, Mm, there are totally five boundary value problems. Then we have five spectra, and using these five spectra, we can construct uh, the value core matrix. Uh, uh, roughly speaking, uh, the value core matrix corresponds to uh, five spectra, and the problem of recovering uh, the coefficients uh, from the value core uh, matrix uh, is uh, a generalization of the Borg problem uh, by two spectra. Uh, so uh, here is uh, the uniqueness uh, theorem um, for this inverse problem. Uh, if we, uh, along with equation seven, we consider the same uh, equation of the same form uh, with coefficients uh, tau zero, tilde tau zero and tilde tau one, uh, then if they uh, while your core matrices uh, coincide, then the coefficients also coincide. Uh, actually, this result is valid not only for the third order, but for uh, the general order, uh, for, for the general case of uh, Merzorov and Shkalikov, uh, for the both cases, for uh, the even case and for the odd case, uh, it has been proved in my papers that this uniqueness theorem holds. 
Uh, but for us, it will be uh, more convenient um, uh, to consider not uh, the, uh, some meromorphic uh, matrix function, uh, but uh, to consider uh, some discrete data related to this uh, matrix function. So let us consider some properties of the eigenvalues. Uh, here we recall the boundary conditions of the problems L1 and L2. Um, it can be shown that uh, the eigenvalues of these two problems uh, have the asymptotics uh, 13. Uh, um, here, uh, the index K uh, stays for the number of the problem. It is one or two. And uh, this index M is uh, uh, the index uh, in, in the sequence uh, of the eigenvalues. Each problem has a countable set of eigenvalues, which are numbered by uh, natural numbers. Uh, um, here uh, we have uh, the coefficient uh, theta, um, uh, which is the integral of uh, to one, and uh, the remainder is of L2. Uh, here is the sign. Uh, if uh, K is one, then we have that uh, the eigenvalues uh, go to uh, plus uh, infinity, and uh, for the second problem, uh, the eigenvalues go to uh, minus infinity. Uh, these two problems are non self joint, uh, so the eigenvalues can be multiple. Uh, but in view of uh, the asymptotics, uh, they are simple for sufficiently large values of n. Uh, so only a finite number of multiple eigenvalues are possible. Uh, for simplicity, we exclude such situation. Uh, we will say that uh, the pair of the coefficients uh, tau zero and tau one, because uh, this pair of coefficients specifies uh, the whole uh, problem. Uh, we say that this pair of coefficients belongs to the class uh, W. Uh, if uh, uh, tau zero uh, and uh, tau one are of uh, the spaces, and if the zeros of uh, the denominators uh, are simple. So it means that the eigenvalues of these two problems are simple. But uh, it's possible that um, uh, the eigenvalues of these two problems coincide with each other, that lambda N1 equals to some lambda L2. Uh, in this case, we can, without loss of generality, assume that uh, the indices N and L coincide. And we define the set uh, K. Um, this is the set of such indices N, um, for which the eigenvalues of these two problems are equal to each other. Uh, obviously, it is a finite set uh, because uh, mm, uh, the, the eigenvalues of L1 and L2 have different asymptotic behavior at infinity. So this set is finite. Uh, and uh, uh, next, uh, obviously, that uh, in this case, the poles of uh, the value core matrix are simple. And uh, the Lorentz series have uh, this form. Uh, he, uh, here, uh, this uh, definition m minus 1, m0, uh, m1, etc., um, is used for um, the coefficients of the Lorentz uh, series. Uh, let us introduce uh, the weight matrices by uh, this formula. Uh, so uh, the, uh, they are defined by. Um, the coefficients m minus one and m zero. Uh, this definition is uh, natural. It uh, generalizes uh, the definition of Yuko and uh, the corresponding inverse problem um, uh, by uh, the eigenvalues and the weight matrices generalizes uh, the problem which we considered uh, in the beginning of this talk uh, by the eigenvalues and the weight numbers. Uh, uh, so, uh, so the following uniqueness uh, theorem holds: uh, if uh, the two spectra and the corresponding uh, weight matrices uh, of uh, the two problems coincide, uh, then the coefficients also coincide in the corresponding spaces. Uh, uh, so uh, here we assume that um, uh, the eigenvalues are simple, uh, but actually, if uh, they uh, they can be multiple. Uh, this case also can be considered. Uh, for example, for the two new problem, the uh, case of uh, uh, multiple uh, eigenvalues uh, was considered in the paper by uh, Buterin. Uh, here, uh, Buterin defined uh, uh, the so-called generalized weight numbers for the situation. 
and uh, for high, uh, higher orders, uh, uh, this also can be done, but uh, the technique will be much more uh, complicated. Mm. So uh, now we confine ourselves uh, to the case of uh, simple uh, eigenvalues. Uh, the third order, uh, the uh, structure of the weight matrices can be presented uh, as in this slide. Uh, if m uh, doesn't belong uh, to k, uh, it means that uh, lambda n1 and lambda n2 are two distinct uh, eigenvalues. Mm, then uh, the corresponding weight matrices have uh, each of them uh, has only one uh, non-zero element, uh, which is located uh, for lambda n1, it's located at this position, and for lambda n2, it's located in this position. And if n uh, belongs to k, it means that um, there are two uh, equal eigenvalues of the two problems. Uh, uh, then uh, the structure will be uh, like this. Uh, here we have uh, some additional uh, weight number uh, gamma n. Uh, and uh, uh, moreover, it can be shown that um, in this case, um, the product of these two betas equals zero. Uh, so at least one of them uh, of beta n1 and beta n2 is zero. It is also possible that uh, they both are zeros. It's also possible. But uh, gamma n is non-zero. Uh, so uh, instead of uh, the weight matrices uh, and the eigenvalues, we can consider such spectral data as we can consider lambda n k um, for uh, natural n k1 and 2, uh, the corresponding numbers uh, beta n k and uh, gamma m for uh, m uh, in the set k. And the inverse problems will be given the spectral data s. Uh, we have to find the coefficients uh, tau 0 and tau 1. Uh, well, next, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me in a few words uh, describe the method of solution for this problem. Uh, it is uh, based on uh, the reduction of the problem uh, to some uh, linear equation. Uh, and, uh, for uh, deriving this equation, we first consider uh, two problems uh, with the coefficients uh, tau 0, tau 1 and uh, tilde tau 0, tilde tau 1. So we have two problems and introduce uh, the following notations. Uh, lambda nk0 um, is lambda nk. Uh, lambda nk1 is uh, tilde lambda nk. So the index 0 means that uh, this value belongs uh, uh, to the first problem, and uh, uh, the index 1 means that uh, this value belongs to the problem with tildes. Uh, then we define the set of indices uh, V. Mm, it consists of uh, the indices nk epsilon. When, uh, a uh, run, runs over uh, natural numbers, uh, k is 1 or 2, uh, k is the number of problem L1, uh, L1 and L2, and epsilon is 0 or 1, so to which uh, pair uh, this object belongs. Uh, and uh, then, uh, we, uh, then by using uh, the standard technique of the method uh, of spectral mappings, uh, lemma uh, 1 can be proved. Uh, this lemma uh, gives us um, the relation uh, 15, uh, which can be considered as a, a system of uh, linear equations. The unknowns in the system are the functions uh, phi and k epsilon. Uh, uh, they are defined uh, here. Uh, this zero means that this is the zero coefficient uh, at the Laurent uh, series, uh, but uh, actually, for sufficiently large uh, values of n, uh, mm, uh, we know that mm, phi k plus 1 uh, is the while solution mm, uh, which uh, corresponds uh, to the mm, column of the while matrix uh, number k plus 1. And uh, it has uh, zeros, which uh, it, it, it has poles, which coincide with the zeros of delta k plus one, k plus one. And uh, these zeros are the eigenvalues lambda with indices k plus one here. But for large m's, mm, uh, 
uh, they are distinct from uh, uh, lambda and k epsilon. Uh, so uh, for simplicity, uh, if uh, uh, the eigenvalues of two, uh, two problems, L1 and L2, are distinct, uh, uh, then we can uh, omit the zero and uh, this phi small are just the values of the y solutions uh, at the points of the two spectra. And similarly for uh, tilde phi and k epsilon. Uh, so here, uh, these functions are unknown, and uh, these functions and these functions g are supposed to be known functions. Uh, for g, uh, there are no formulas here because the formulas, formulas for them are very complicated. Mm, but mm, these functions uh, are constructed by using only the problem with tilde and by using the spectral data S. Uh, we don't need to know uh, tau zero and tau one to construct these functions and these this functions with tilde. Uh, this lemma is obtained um, under the assumption that we have two problems and we have the uh, spectral data. But uh, then we can uh, suppose that we don't know uh, tau zero and tau one. Uh, we know only the corresponding spectral data and we want to recover tau zero and tau one. Uh, then we can choose uh, the model problem. Uh, th this problem with uh, tilde tau zero and tilde tau one uh, is called uh, the model problem. We can choose uh, the model problem, um, which is convenient for us. We can find its spectral data and we can uh, use the model problem and the known spectral data S uh, to construct uh, tilde G and uh, tilde phi. Then we can solve this linear system to obtain uh, phi. Uh, and these functions phi, uh, they are related to the wild solutions, and so they are related to the coefficients of uh, our problem of uh, tau zero. Uh, uh, they are re related to tau zero and tau one. And uh, the next theorem uh, describes this relation. Uh, so uh, here we uh, define. Uh, uh, tilde tau zero and tilde tau one in a special way, and we construct uh, some functions. Uh, I think uh, there is no need to elaborate into these formulas. It's um, um, we just uh, uh, note that uh, this function tilde eta de also depends only on uh, the model problem and on the spectral data uh, of our unknown problem. And uh, then uh, theorem three says th that. Uh, uh, tau one and uh, tau zero can be constructed by uh, these relations uh, as uh, this uh, series. In the series, tilde eta are functions uh, related to the model problem, and uh, phi are the functions which are obtained from the system. Uh, so, if we solve uh, the system on the previous slide, then we can find these functions and construct. Uh, the coefficients, and uh, uh, it's important uh, that. Uh, the convergence of the series is proved in the corresponding spaces. Uh, the series 16 converts in L2. Uh, this series um, also converts in L2. And here C are some uh, regular, regularizing constants. So uh, we need to add some constants for the convergence of the series. But actually, they are not important because uh, when we differentiate, uh, they disappear. Mm. So if uh, this series converts in L2, and so the derivative belongs to W2 minus 1. And this uh, series uh, converts uh, absolutely and uniformly, so uh, it's more uh, smooth. Uh, uh, so we have that uh, tau 1 uh, constructed by this formula belongs to L2, and tau 0 belongs to W2 minus 1. So they belongs, uh, b belong to the uh, uh, corresponding spaces. Uh, uh, next, mm, uh, it appears to be inconvenient uh, for, for the further analysis. It's inconvenient to consider mm, the system uh, 15 in this form uh, because uh, the series here uh, converts only with brackets. Uh, so uh, it converts only in this sense. Mm, and it's convenient to group the terms in the series uh, to transform uh, the system uh, to mm, uh, some uh, absolutely convergent uh, uh, to some absolutely convergent uh, series and to obtain uh, 
an equation uh, in the Banach space. So uh, the Banach space will be the space M of uh, bounded infinite uh, sequences A indices, uh, uh, indices uh, belong uh, to the set V uh, of uh, such uh, three indices. And the norm in the space in is the supremum uh, of uh, absolute value. Uh, and uh, we reduce um, uh, uh, the system to uh, such form. Uh, psi is obtained from phi, tilde psi from uh, tilde phi, and uh, tilde r is uh, an operator which is obtained uh, by this uh, uh, values uh, tilde g. Uh, here, psi uh, for each fixed x, psi and tilde psi are elements of M, and tilde r is a compact uh, linear operator. I is the ident identity operator is M. Uh, tilde R and uh, tilde Psi are related uh, to the model problem and uh, Psi uh, is unknown. It is related to the unknown coefficients. And uh, now I'm ready to formulate uh, one of the main results uh, for uh, numbers S, uh, which include uh, lambda and K, uh, beta and K and uh, gamma and to be the spectral data of a problem with uh, coefficients uh, tau zero and tau one of this uh, of uh, uh, w, uh, the following conditions are necessary and sufficient. Uh, the first condition is the asymptotic formulas uh, for the uh, eigenvalues and for the weight numbers uh, beta and k. Uh, for gamma n, we don't have asymptotics because uh, there is only a finite number of them. Uh, next, uh, there are some structural pro properties that uh, for distant n, uh, the eigenvalues are distinct. And then uh, these properties of the weight numbers. And the third property for each fixed x, the operator in the main equation uh, must have uh, a bounded inverse operator. Uh, if uh, this in bounded inverse operator exists, uh, it means that the main equation uh, has a unique solution. Uh, so actually, this is uh, the condition of the unique uh, solvability for the main equation. Uh, such conditions uh, appear, uh, it, it appears because we have uh, the non sulfur joint uh, operator. Uh, in the second order case, uh, if we consider the Sturm-Neville problem, but with a complex valued potential, uh, then also a kind of this condition will be required. Uh, the problem is, is that we cannot find some, uh, uh, it, 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 it seems to be uh, impossible to describe this condition in some more simple form, but uh, one can consider um, some special cases when this condition holds. And, uh, uh, the third of them is uh, the case of small perturbations of the spectral data, and the second case is the self adjoint case. Uh, so first, let us consider um, the small perturbation of the spectral data. Uh, suppose that we have a fixed uh, problem with tilde. Uh, for simplicity, we assume that it uh, tilde k is an uh, is the empty set. So there are no coinciding eigenvalues of the two boundary value problems. Then um, there exists a sufficiently small epsilon, such that for any complex numbers which uh, satisfy uh, this inequality, this inequality means that uh, uh, these numbers are sufficiently close to the spectral data of the problem with tilde, uh, then uh, um, the solution of the inverse problem exists. So there exist uh, coefficients uh, tau zero and tau one uh, for which uh, S is the spectral data. And uh, moreover, uh, the corresponding stability estimates can be obtained in the corresponding spaces L2 and W2 minus one. This is the theorem on local solvability and stability. Uh, and uh, the next case, I'll try to tell it, uh, uh, timely, uh, the self adjoint case. Uh, suppose that the coefficients tau zero and uh, tau zero are pure uh, imaginary and uh, tau one is a pure uh, is uh, real. Uh, then, if we multiply uh, this 
uh, expression by i uh, by imaginary uh, unit uh, then we get the self-adjoint differential expression and then these two problems will be adjoined to each other uh, but uh, for technical convenience we will not multiply by uh, this imaginary unit then uh, these two uh, uh, the spectra of the problems l1 and l2 will be symmetric with respect to the imaginary axis uh, so the picture will be like this uh, here uh, red dots are the eigenvalues of l1 and uh, the blue dots are the eigenvalues of l2 they will be symmetric with respect to the uh, imaginary axis and uh, the weight numbers uh, beta and k also will be symmetric uh, then in this case we can consider uh, only one spectrum um, uh, lambda and uh, uh, let us choose lambda n1 so we choose red eigenvalues and uh, the corresponding betas are beta n1 uh, next, if we um, uh, if we suppose that this relation holds, then uh, we can have uh, then uh, our enumeration uh, is different from the previously con uh, considered one, uh, because here if you have if we have that uh, the two eigenvalues of the two problems coincide. Uh, a red um, eigenvalue co coincides with a blue one, um, then uh, there is a pair of uh, symmetric uh, two eigenvalues. And the index, uh, let uh, the index of this pair will be P of n. So if um, this is uh, lambda n, this is will be uh, uh, lambda P. Uh, and uh, K plus will be the set of such indices for uh, which uh, uh, such pairs exist. It can happen that N equals PN. This corresponds to this situation when uh, the both uh, eigenvalues are located on the imaginary axis. It also uh, can be so. Uh, so uh, if we have uh, some uh, such two pairs, then the corresponding gammas are uh, uh, mm, a complex uh, conjugate to each other. And if you have this situation, then the corresponding gamma n is uh, real, and moreover, it's positive. This is very important that it's positive. And next, in the self-adjoint case, uh, we can obtain um, uh, some simple uh, um, sufficient conditions for the inverse problem solvability. Uh, denote by uh, W plus um, the, the set of uh, uh, such uh, tau ones and uh, tau zeros. Uh, which are real valued and uh, ah uh, so uh, it means that uh, uh, they are uh, uh, the self adjoint case uh, now uh, uh, let uh, a set s, uh, s plus which consists of uh, lambda n's beta n's and uh, 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 gamma n's for n belongs to k plus uh, let uh, this set satisfy uh, the following conditions the first condition is asymptotics uh, the second condition is uh, lambda n's are distinct and uh, beta n's are non-zero and the third condition uh, we require um, that um, the real part of lambda n's uh, is non-negative uh, and that gamma ends are positive. Uh, then under these simple conditions, uh, there exists uh, a unique solution of the inverse problem. Uh, these conditions uh, are not, uh, actually they are not necessary. The only unnecessary condition is this one, uh, because uh, we require uh, all the red points uh, to be located uh, at the right half plane and all the blue points uh, to be located um, uh, in the, left half plane and they can meet uh, on the boundary and then we have this gamma ends uh, so, so this is some uh, limitation uh, but actually all the other conditions are uh, also necessary uh, uh, so uh, uh, this uh, in the theorem we have no uh, no such conditions as uh, the main equation solvability because uh, because under uh, it happens that under these conditions the unique uh, solvability of the main equation can be proved and uh, it is the most uh, I think it's the most uh, difficult and the, the most uh, central part of the proof is to prove the unique solvability of the main equation so under this condition we have, conditions we obtain the unique solvability and so obtain the solution of the inverse problem.